Dear friends, uh, let me continue from last lecture and you must be observing that after uh, getting an idea how to get initial gross weight, managing the mission requirements, we have been spending a lot of time on wing, aerofoil, aerofoil characteristics, shape of an aerofoil and whenever we are talking about shape of an aerofoil, we are talking about what is the point where the airfoil locally can have Mach 1 because we were interested to know what is critical Mach number. We also try to understand how the stalling angle of an aerofoil gets affected because of its shape. We also realized location of maximum camber plays an important role in CL max. We have also seen how nose radius plays a role to whatever significant level for CL max. And somewhere when we are discussing about cambered aerofoil, we were happy that cambered aerofoil is required for raising the CL max. But we have noticed as I increase the camber, there is a CMAC moment, non dimensional, which is negative in sign, that means to generate a nose down moment and we only mentioned that when you are trying to design an aircraft, yes, camber will increase CL max, but we have to handle the CMAC negative as well to balance that airplane. If you recall stability and control courses, you will immediately catch why I am talking about CMAC negative to be handled. In any case, when we will be progressing towards configuration design, we will have explicit revision and we will try to synthesize this understanding because at one point of time we need CL max to be higher, that is we need more camber, but we should also understand CMAC negative will be there as a penalty, so we need to handle those things. Then from aerofoil, we graduated to wing and immediately terms like aspect ratio came. And we have seen aspect ratio plays a very important role. A lot of time we have spent on aspect ratio. Today I will also touch upon aspect ratio, few things. Please understand this design course is not telling you 1 plus 1 is 2. The design course, the greatest challenge is how to make 1 plus 1 equal to what you want. Sometimes 1 plus 1 you may require 0.5. Sometimes 1 plus 1 you want 2.5 in a symbolic manner. That is how to synergize the advantages and how to minimize the disadvantages. That is the beauty of a design, right? So it is very important that we understand fundamentally a few parameters because we need to use them for configuring an aircraft. If I go for aspect ratio, which we we have seen if aspect ratio is increased, alpha stall reduces because self downwash is reduced, right? Similarly, for a given S, if S is fixed, 
for a given S, if aspect to should increase, what we are meaning is actually span is increasing. If I increase aspect ratio generally, we will find L by D will increase. But at the same time, we understand that for each aspect ratio, to get L by D max, it corresponds to a particular velocity or speed if you want to maintain lift equal to weight. We know that, right? The other interesting observation, useful observation, you must have through span, we are talking about aspect ratio. You see here, carefully I have said, for a given S, if I increase aspect ratio, span increases, right? Let me indirectly, I am telling you, the decision what S I need to have is not dependent on primarily on aspect ratio. It is dependent on something else. For example, if lift equal to weight, then I know this is equal to half rho v square s into cl. If I have a design limitation to have a cl particular number, if I decide the particular altitude I will be flying, if I decide the cruise speed, then s is fixed. This is one way of perceiving it. Another way of design perception is we say W by S is fixed for a particular mission. So you'll see soon that S is fixed through other criteria, primarily here. The genesis is here, right? Okay. After all, area will decide how much lift will be there. But then we also know if this is the area is required for lift, if the row and speed, everything is same, then if I have same area like this moving and one same area like this moving, you know by intuitively that this man is what we are looking for. So there we try to talk about aspect ratio. Right? And if you see now, the induced drag, which is for low subsonic, I write like KCL square into half rho v square s and half rho v square s into cdi this is the induced drag and for a level flight v is nothing but under root 2 w by s rho cl and if i see now the expression for induced drag this will be half rho v square s for k I will write 1 by pi aspect ratio e so into 1 by pi aspect ratio e this is the k part half rho v square s into k into cl square so what will be cl cl will be 2 w by s rho v square. So I write it here cl square means 4 w square s square rho square v to the power 4. This is the induced drag. Now see I could easily reduce this power s v square it is v2 4 and somewhere here 2 so 2 so you get di is equal to 2 w square by rho s v square into 1 by pi aspect ratio into e. So this di in this drag is 2 w square by rho s v square into 1 by pi aspect ratio e. And what is aspect ratio? We have defined this as span square by S. So then DI becomes 2 W square rho S V square 
1 by pi b square by s into e. Now this s s gets cancelled. So I have the expression for di as 2 w square rho v square 1 by pi b square to 1 by e. Right? Watch this expression carefully. Why we are addressing this in those drag? Because drag has drag because of shape and the velocity regime, which is called parasite. Parasite drag plus drag induced. If we can somehow reduce the induced drag, which is induced because of lift, then I can improve the lift to drag ratio, right? So what this expression is telling me, is telling me the induced drag goes 1 by b square. So for a given s, if I go on increasing the b, induced drag component will reduce. That is a design understanding of aspect ratio and area relationship. What is another observation? The di is proportional to w square. So if the weight is more, your induced drag will be also more. Please see this expression. Naturally, because weight is more, you require more CL. And this also says di is proportional to 1 by v square. So as speed is increased, Induced drag will reduce. Understanding is very simple. Airplane performance one. You have seen to maintain level flight. If speed is higher, then CL requirement will be less, and induced drag is proportional to CL square. So when we are talking about discussing about weight, we should also be very very clear that if unnecessarily you are increasing the weight, you are definitely going to pay penalty in terms of induced drag and hence your lift to drag ratio for the airplane may suffer, right? So this is another way of looking into aspect ratio. What we have done, we have said aspect ratio, I am visualizing as if area is same, I am not changing the aspect ratio means I am changing the span. It is well understood. If you go on increasing the span, it will create structural issues. You have to be careful. You should not hang like this. There could be a problem of, well, you land, airplane will do like this. Slight banking may, the tail may hit the ground, which is common phenomena for large span gliders. And that is why the gliders you'll find will have, large span gliders will have a tail wheel here as well. So they take the load. So whenever they damage, you replace that. Okay. Saying that, finally we want to design, we want number to start with. The guideline number is, if you are talking about general aviation, let's say twin engine, Aspect ratio around 7 to 8 is good. In fact, I will say a little higher, 7.8 to 8. This is the range, right? Single engine, little less, but OK, same order to start with. Twin turboprop, this number will be around 8.5 to 9.3, around this range, which is historically available. These are all the guidelines when you try to conceptualize initial configuration, right? For jet, of course, these were propeller driven. You understood this. For a jet, typical jet transport, I will prefer around 7 to 7.5. Around this number, the aspect ratio will be there. And if you further increase the speed, you will find the aspect ratio will go on reducing. It will come to 6. 
5.5, like that. But these are good enough number to start a configuration. Now today's youngsters, they are not just happy with wing or a conventional tail. They don't like a diagram if I draw it like this. If I draw a plane like this, this, sir, what is this? What they don't like? They say, why not something is here? They will prefer something like this. They will prefer it should look like this. They will prefer here something like this. And here they will like What is the perception, perceptional difference between the earlier figure and this figure? The moment I draw like this, this will speak about speed. This is a high speed. And today the youth, they don't want sluggish, right? They want things to be fast. Okay. So although casually I have drawn this, I thought we must touch upon these things before we go for next stage of our conceptual design. So what is this top portion? This is what? This is canard, right? So let us see. Since we are talking aspect ratio, I thought we we'll talk about canard a little bit. Canards are basically control surfaces which are of different shape you will find depending upon speed zone you are flying. But concentrate on low speed airplane. The low speed airplane and Canada is used for Control, link the, controlling the airplane. What is the difference between canard controlling an airplane and a aft tail controlling an airplane? You know this, but let me also tell you. If this is aft tail, if I want to give a nose up moment, then I have to deflect this elevator up like this. Right? Which in turn means, yes, it will indeed give a nose up moment, but net lift, which is lift on wing, the lift on tail will, will reduce because lift on tail is acting downward. But same nose up moment if I want to give through canard, then I put a canard here, okay? And now what I do, I deflect it like this. If I deflect like this, it gives a force here and which gives you nose up moment. Now you see, this lift on canard gets added with lift of wing, so your total lift increases. There are other issues with canard, but this is general first thought advantage, okay? But now question comes, what is the advantage if you have canard with high aspect ratio? Because we are focused on aspect ratio. Imagine this is the wing. And you put a canard here. And it is flying, whatever it is. This is canard. This is schematic, right? If I put canard with high aspect ratio, that means canard ARC, canard is high, so its tall angle will be lower.
So think of if the airplane is approaching stall, then before the wing stall, the canard will start giving signal of getting stall earlier than the wing stalls. So now the pilot can manage, he gets a warning, right? Okay, so generally for that reason, canard may have high aspect ratio. Okay, purely from stall angle point of view. Somebody will tell me why not, un why unnecessarily making canard high aspect ratio, why can't you make a canard highly cambered wing canard? Generally, we avoid camber, etc., in control surfaces. But nobody stops us putting those if you know how to handle their consequences. And those are the things we'll be talking in terms of stability and control design at an appropriate time in this course. Thank you very much. <laughs>